Children need proper guidance in their development and should be encouraged in their enthusiasm for good reasoning and positive conversations about what life should be. We should all provide the supervision and direction for their positive development. Hi there, I'm Audrey Williams. Welcome to today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Coming up on the pages, redevelopment of the capital city, Kingston. Also, ideas to make sure summer is cool for children this holiday. Later, investments in health for this fiscal year. Stay tuned for all those and more after these messages. Each time you're not paying full attention to the road environment, the greater your chances of getting in a crash like that. Plan routes to avoid focusing on GPS systems, prevent children from roaming in motor vehicles, turn down the volume of car stereo systems, pull off the roadway if you have to use mobile devices, do not read, watch television or eat while driving, avoid multitasking and keep conversations with other passengers to a minimum. Whether you walk, ride or drive, avoid potentially fatal distractions. The UDC continues to spearhead the development of downtown Kingston into a modern world-class city. The structural build-out of the city's blueprint for renewal is shaping up to be something magnificent. More on that in this feature. Nineteen sixty-two marked the beginning of a proud and free era of independence for Jamaica. This tiny yet Talawa nation was now free to create its own destiny. Six years later, the Urban Development Corporation was created to make development happen when and where it's needed within the context of national priorities. One such area was the Kingston waterfront from Bank of Jamaica to the east to the Kingston Craft Market in the west. A post-independent Jamaica and by extension Kingston was by no means fully developed and so by walking the streets of the capital city one would see and learn much about Jamaica its history and culture. Downtown Kingston in particular tells that story very well, having given birth to rock steady and reggae music. With many of the island's most historic buildings and monuments lining the streets, downtown Kingston is also a bustling business district with busy roadways and crowded sidewalks. This rich history is one such impetus for the Urban Development Corporation, UDC, which has been spearheading the development of downtown Kingston. Partnering with both local and international organizations, plans are underway towards championing the transformation of downtown Kingston and to revitalize the area while paying homage to the UNESCO designation of Kingston as a creative music city. In 1995, the UDC was entrusted with its tax incentive program and that pulled investments in the downtown Kingston area. A major investor is the multinational corporation Digicel, which constructed its global headquarters on prime waterfront property sold by the UDC. Other developments that have gained traction include the construction of Grace Kennedy's multi-story complex on Port Royal Street, made possible on lands sold to them by the UDC. Grace also renovated a building on Harbour Street for use as its financial centre. And nearby, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade is finalising plans for the construction of its headquarters on property along the Kingston waterfront, close to the Jamaica Stock Exchange, on lands made available by the UDC. The redevelopment of downtown is being guided by the UDC's Downtown Kingston and Port Royal Redevelopment Plan 2030. It's being implemented on a phase-by-phase -phase basis and is aligned with the Vision 2030 Jamaica National Development Plan. This redevelopment plan is giving energy to an updated development order for Kingston as well as guidelines for land use and zoning. Aspects of the UDC plan already in motion include the construction of a bus park, one component of a multimodal transport centre for the city. There is also the upgraded St. William Grant Park and the redevelopment of the National Heroes Park. Over in the Market District, significant development is evident with the build-out of the Chapel Lane Market. 
The UDC took another step in partnering with Digicel and the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation, the KSAC, to ensure electrical upgrades were completed on the reconstructed coronation market. The UDC sees downtown Kingston as the city of possibilities, the ideal location for work, home, leisure, cultural immersion, and entertainment. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for a woman like me. UDC's Fireworks on the Waterfront is a fixed event that's being used by the UDC to promote family entertainment and stimulate an active nightlife in downtown Kingston. Adding to this is the construction of Festival Marketplace by the UDC, an eatery space catering to day and night patrons who will also benefit from the nearby craft market. And for a more in-depth cultural experience, there's the newly renovated Simone Bolivar Cultural Center in the heart of Parade, designed and built by the UDC. The center, managed by the Institute of Jamaica, complements other cultural facilities located in the Parade area, such as Liberty Hall, the restored headquarters of national hero, the right excellent Marcus Mazaya Garvey. The Urban Development Corporation, demonstrating commitment to the redevelopment of downtown Kingston. Stop! Don't turn a blind eye to child abuse, child neglect, and child labor. If you know or even suspect child abuse, call the Children's Registry. Together, we can make a difference. The summer school break is on, and several organizations are putting on activities to engage children in fun and enlightening experiences. If you haven't finalized your children's summer calendar, watch this next feature. Hey, Ira, you decide what you're going to do for the summer? And please don't tell me you want to go visit your cousin overseas because I don't have no money right now. No worries, self, mommy. Look up and there's several options right here in Jamaica. You want to see? Oh, okay, sure. Show me. Today, my rise like the sunrise, my bright and my upright. No one can break my vibes. I'm in okay, who I fight, I know I criticize, I'm on a higher heights. If you're looking for an arts-based summer program, look no further than the Institute of Jamaica's Junior Center. It is a visual and performing arts program, and included in that are activities that will not just develop the skills in the youngsters in terms of visual and performing arts, but certainly the entire person. There are programs to deal with life skills, activities that deal with life skills, mental wellness. So some of the activities are like the regular speech and drama, art and craft, music, dancing, paper making. There is what we call kitchen fixing, which is an, um, culinary skills. So they learn to prepare some Jamaican dishes. And, you know, just exciting, fun. It's summer, so it is fun, fun, fun. So if you're between the ages of 6 and 18 years old and interested in the arts, mixed with life skills such as conflict resolution and teamwork, then be sure to sign up for the IOJ's Junior Center Summer Program. If you have three or more children attending the summer program, you'll pay a discounted rate. We encourage parents to kickstart their summer fun for their children at the public library nearest you where children can enjoy a fun-filled summer experience in a safe and comfortable caring environment where learning and fun are intertwined as a holistic experience for their children. You've got that right. The Jamaica Library Service has been providing 6 to 14 year olds with opportunities to learn Spanish, sign language, get computer training and become better readers. After all, it's a library summer camp. We will be featuring art and craft programs, music, dance, drama, and a host of other activities. And guess what? The summer program is free of cost. So? We encourage members of the library and members of the public to visit the library nearest to them, where they will get additional information on the summer program. If your child is more into sport, then the YMCA should be your choice. 
Five to 14 year olds can get involved in swimming, karate, badminton and other sporting activities. And get this. Our summer program, it runs for eight weeks and we start at 9 to 4.30. Parents get until 6.30 for pickup to make it more convenient for them. What's more? We have dance, we have drama, we have a speech and we have music in terms of singing. We're also having field trips to various interesting places. We have games, sing-along, excursions, we have um, speakers coming in to talk on different topics such as um, road safety. The art and craft for the kids, it is geared towards having them learn about art skills, craft skills, which I wouldn't normally get in school. Although the YMCA summer camp caters to 5 to 14 year olds, if you're over the age, there's still a place for you at the Y. We do invite volunteers to come and work with us. If you want a work experience and a fabulous summer, great experience, you can come along. You should send your children, they will learn a lot and they will learn to volunteer and give up themselves. For further information on the YMCA's summer camp, call 754-9034. Wow, Taira, you know, all of these things they're showing me, they are interesting, but bigger question is which one you're going to choose? Mm. Oh, it's my day to do anything I want to. It's my time, and I'll use it any way I want to. Let's get together and feel all right is the theme for our 2016 Emancipation and Independence celebrations. As Jamaica marks its 54th year of independence and 182 years since emancipation. The use of that theme from Bob Marley's One Love was made possible with permission from the Bob Marley Foundation. At the recent launch, Culture Minister Olivia Grange spoke to the theme's relevance. This is a call to us and a reminder of one of the key factors in our emancipation and independence. That factor being unity and togetherness. Putting our hands and hearts together as we all continue to build Jamaica. Jamaica land we love. So from Sunday, July 31 to Saturday, August 6, the island will be engulfed in a series of events and activities to celebrate our emancipation and independence. The Jamaica 54 celebrations will span the length and breadth of the island and will include church services, parish vigils, flag raising ceremonies, festival bandwagons or festival roadshows, public forum, street dances and independence concerts. Government and private institutions can register their events with the JCDC. These events will be accredited or endorsed as independence celebrations events and will benefit from promotion through listings on the promotional websites of the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, the JCDC, the JTB, Jamaica Tourist Board, the Jamaica Information Service and other entities. Highly anticipated staples will make their return such as the Emancipation Vigil in Civil St. Anne on July 31. The Independence Village will again be set up at the Ronnie Williams Entertainment Center in Kingston. So too, the Auntie Roach Literary Festival and Mellow Go Round. And of course, Grand Gala returns to the National Arena on August 6. There will also be a number of new events, including Reggae to Rio, to be celebrated on August 5 as we look forward to our athletes' Olympic success in Rio, Brazil. Leading up to August 6, the major JCDC festival events will take the spotlight. Good evening, everyone. 
My name is Monique Patrice Robb, and I proudly represent the parish of St. Mary. I'm banking in Jesus, bank of life, bank of Jehovah, bank of Christ. Banking in the Lord and everything is all right. Number one, trust it, bank when I think twice. Oh, no, catch the spirit yet? Maybe the fashion will bring it alive. This year's theme is Wear It In Gold and Stripe It Bold. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. The health of a nation is said to be the wealth of the nation. So Minister Christopher Tufton used his recent sectoral presentation to outline significant investments towards making Jamaicans more healthy and prosperous. Let's find out more. Research shows that healthy people make for productive citizens, and productive citizens make for a thriving economy and society. In pursuit of a thriving economy and society, the Ministry of Health's plan for this fiscal year is to continue encouraging all Jamaicans to embrace healthy lifestyle practices. This includes maintaining a balanced diet and avoiding excessive consumption of fats, salts and sugars. We will be revitalizing our efforts to operationalize the food industry task force towards reducing salts, sugar and fat content in processed foods and outlining a caloric values on labels so that the public can make an educated choice as to what they are eating. There'll also be interventions to reduce the use of tobacco, alcohol, and other substances that are contributors to non-communicable diseases and CDs. There needs to be a comprehensive relook and implementation of the amendments to the, drug, the Dangerous Drugs Act, the impact it is having and will have on the health services, and that funding be urgently put in place to ensure a robust prevention and control program in this regard. And we, in the Ministry of Health, are, will lead that process in the months ahead. The Ministry will also encourage Jamaicans to do regular medical screening and checkups and engage in physical activity through a national campaign dubbed Jamaica Moves. And while the population does those things to prevent diseases... We need to prepare a public health care system primary, secondary, and tertiary clinics and hospitals to adequately treat personal health issues as they occur. As a matter of priority, this fiscal year, the Ministry of Health will be advancing the process which has started for the development of a 10-year strategic plan for the health sector. This strategic review and planning process will also include a policy review of the governance mechanism for the sector and particularly the functionality of the regional health authorities with the aim, Mr. Speaker, of defining the most efficient approach to managing the delivery of health care across the country. A World Bank-led benchmarking cost review is also being undertaken. This will examine and benchmark costs associated with the administration of health care in different areas to determine if the spending is optimal. This, Mr. Speaker, will facilitate taking the necessary steps to reapportion expenditures to ensure the greatest levels of efficiency. A pilot intervention in six major health centers and eight hospitals will form the basis for reducing the time it takes for a patient to see a doctor in the public health sector. It will also involve improving customer service and assessment and redirecting non-emergency cases from hospitals to the nearest primary health center. The ministry is also moving to reduce the backlog of surgeries by increasing personnel and improving operating theaters. Doctors' working hours is also being reviewed. This could lead to better and safer working arrangements for our doctors and an increase in the number of doctors employed within the system, leading to greater throughput of patients in some areas and further reduction in waiting time. 
A public-private partnership PPP policy is also being developed to support the provision of diagnostic services, expansion of hospitals and provision of pharmacy services. At the same time, the National Health Fund will be moving into some health centers. Attention will also be given to ensuring that government collects private health insurance to help fund the care for those who cannot afford to pay. A feasibility plan for a national health insurance scheme is also being worked on. In keeping with the e-government thrust, the ministry is also moving to expand electronic record keeping across the general public health sector. The use of telemedicine technology is also to become routine as government expands the avenues for diagnosing and treating patients. Encouraging healthy lifestyle practices, reducing the burden on hospitals, cutting patient waiting times and upgrading and expanding the various health facilities. These and more are on the agenda as the Ministry of Health advances the health of our people and Jamaica's wealth. Motorists, know your rights as road users. If you are stopped by the police in a road check, the police have the right to ask for your driver's license and vehicle documents. If you don't have the documents on you, you can ask for five days to provide them at a convenient police station. If you don't have vehicle insurance, you can be prosecuted and face the court. If you fail to renew the registration license, the police are entitled to seize your vehicle. If the police wish to search your vehicle, they should tell you the reasonable grounds for wanting the search. If you are given a ticket, sign it only if you plan to pay the fine and not contest the charge in court. And please be reminded, children under 18 years must wear a seatbelt, even if they are seated in the back. Know your rights. Knowledge of the traffic road code makes it easier to work with the police as they do their job to make the road safer for you and everyone else. Up next, top stories making news this week. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. Jamaica is now on stronger footing following a brainstorming session on growth and debt management strategies sponsored by the World Bank this week. We make a commitment for actualizing what we have learned. A commitment to a resolve for economic growth and prosperity for our people. The Economic Programme Oversight Committee, EPOC, this week reported that Jamaica continues to see a positive trend in revenue and grants. EPOC's co-chairman Richard Biles hailed Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ for improvements in its tax collection mechanisms, which led to strong tax revenue of $67.6 billion compared to a budget of $63.8 billion. It looks to me like the Tax Administration uh, really is getting on top of this issue of tax collection. Uh, certainly they are performing much closer to budget and beating budget uh, pretty regularly now. The Port Authority of Jamaica has launched a Port Community System PCS to manage all trade logistics processes. It will enhance the operations of the logistics activities by encouraging and promoting more efficient and effective trading practices while at the same time increasing the velocity of decision-making and effectiveness, resulting in a reduction in the cost of doing business in Jamaica. Small and medium-sized manufacturing companies will have access to a $30 million loan facility being provided by the Exim Bank and Jamaica Manufacturers Association, the JMA. The rollout of this new loan pro product is intended to bring us more than a step closer to leveling the playing field between big and small players in the productive sector. And by, by making working capital more accessible, serviceable and affordable to, to more SME manufacturers. Farmers of the new Forest Duff House Agropark in Manchester have been provided with water tanks and drip irrigation hose to improve the water supply on their farms. The distribution was done under the Rural Economic Development Initiative Ready Project at a cost of $174 million. It is government's responsibility to help the farming community to increase production 
through a regular supply of water. We have unlimited underwater, underground resources. We need to tap into those resources, bring it up, get reliable pumps and supply the water so that we can grow our economy through agriculture. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has given instructions for a strategic review of the National Housing Trust, NHT, to begin in short order. Jamaica must make a decision as to how we are going to use this valuable asset called the NHT to ensure that every Jamaican who wants to own their own home can do so and that this benefit lasts for a long, long, long time. The Prime Minister addressed another issue this week, reassuring the public that all was being done to bring the killer or killers to justice, even as he mourned last Saturday's murder of a three-year-old girl in St. Anne. The head of government also called on Jamaicans to be parents to all children and report suspicious activities. Meanwhile, a dormant Joint Select Committee of Parliament established in 2014 to review legislation against gender-based violence will be reconvened shortly. This is a united and focused approach. We're strategically looking at areas of law that need to be reformed. We're not afraid to take on the awesome task of effecting change. When you harm the innocent, the weak and the vulnerable, you must feel the full brunt of the national law enforcement apparatus. And finally, Jamaica will be doing away with visa requirements for a number of Latin American countries in an effort to attract more visitors from that region. The whole business of, of visa as a means of facilitating um, access to destination is, is, is a global reality now. And um, e-visas are becoming quite popular. Um, India, for example, is a good example. Australia and South Africa. And they have been able to develop the platforms that allow for visitors to go online and pay the requisite fees and get their printout visas to work with. So we have to look at those kind of innovation as we seek to build out visitor facilitation. And those were some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. The Aedes aegypti is one of several types of mosquitoes found here in Jamaica and elsewhere in the world. Know them. They are small, dark mosquitoes with white lyre shaped markings and banded legs. The Aedes aegypti mosquito lives in and around places where people gather and breeds anywhere water settles, such as artificial containers in and around homes and other buildings. It's a vector that transmits the virus that causes a number of diseases, such as dengue, chick V, and the Zika virus. Find them. Destroy them. Cover water containers to prevent mosquitoes getting inside. Dispose of garbage containers to prevent water settling in them. And frequently check and empty any container that water might settle to ensure these are kept dry. And scrub vessels clean to get rid of eggs. The Aedes aegypti mosquito. Don't give it a home. This is where we take our leave on yet another enlightening edition of Jamaica Magazine. We value your feedback, so keep the link. Tell us what you thought of the show. Send an email to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. You can also visit our website, jis.gov.jm, or our social media platforms. Until next time, I'm Audrey Williams, reminding you to take care on the roads, and by all means, be at peace with each other. Take care. has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.